sing countdown engines on three. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to start learning about cutting. So we'll just start with a new part, why not? We'll always start with a part for the we won't get into all the assemblies and drawing stuff just yet. Right, so quick and dirty, why would you want to use uh, the extruded cut and all the rest of it? Well, before we can cut something, we need something to exist. So what we're going to quickly do is what we've learned already, which is just make a shaft. So we'll call that 50 millimeters, like that, and then we will extrude that out to a length of, I don't know, 100 millimeters, like so. Now, when we try to do uh, revolved bosses and so on, what happens is is that we um, can revolve a, a shape in a sense it's like turning but the opposite and when we do this we um, are basically we just cut them get rid of them so we've just got this weird shape like so we revolve this we do that great so obviously when we revolve something we cannot um, basically select um, alterations to this profile it has to be symmetrical in all fields across all planes generally so there you go you know basically the cross section is the same either end and so on we'll get to doing cross sections and all those things soon but what happens if we wanted to put a flat just if this is a shaft what happens if you wanted to put a keyway in it or something like that? Well, that's where extruded cut comes in. Extruded cut basically is like an extruded boss, just a cut. We're removing material. Same thing applies. So we've got this shaft and we want to start the cut here at this face. So then we normalize the view to that face like so. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> So what I want to do is I want to make sure, like, I want to cut a keyway, and I want to make it parallel to this, so I can just quickly draw something out, like so. Could have also used a square box. And very quickly I'll dimension it to the center, like so. We'll make it 12, and we'll make it uh, 5, so it's a 10 millimeter keyway. And this dimension, we don't really need, we just want it to be outside of. We can still just give that a dimension. Now there are other ways you can do this, but this is just a quick and dirty way. Then we want to mirror the whole thing, so we select everything there. And then we mirror that, like so. Booyah, like that. Now that we've done that, we can just get rid of that line. And we've got basically our keyway profile and we can extrude a cut now I know my dimensions are missing not really bothered I'm just trying to show you how to do a cut so there we go you can do blind you can do through all um, you can do up to surface so we can do it up to there like so so basically that's as far as we can cut it vortex basically means that you can just pick um, like an edge or something like that um, up to body is also another good one because then you can just pick well it'll just do that all the way through if you have two separate bodies that's how it can uh, you know cut through all of them or you can do mid plane which means it basically cuts in both directions this whatever dimension you have here so we're going to do blind uh, oh no sorry we'll go up to up to surface and we'll go up to that surface there and we'll go yes and then there you go you see it's cut out a keyway so that is how you do um extruded cuts like that now let's just say that this is a shaft this is actually a piston a hydraulic piston let's just say so we've put a keyway in the shaft but we want a piston ring now there are two ways you can do this and both have their merits but just for now we will use the uh, revolved cut um, so when we go revolve cut we have to find the plane in which we want to work so we will go um, we will go top plane again because that's where we did this groove um, no we didn't we did the end one hell am I talking about we did the revolve um, boss this there but regardless what we'll do is now all we need to do is exactly the same as anything we do which is revolved which is we put a center line in there um, there are other ways you can do this but this is the way I always do it. it's the simplest way I always find 
got a square because we're going to make a piston ring groove and we just do it like so and then very quickly we need to dimension it now dimensioning stuff is very important you can do it from your center um, which is good to a degree but if you have a surface just so like this just so we could always make the piston thicker and you decide that we'll always make the piston thicker this way so from here outwards um, or basically from there up um, but we always want our piston ring to be in the same place so if we want our piston ring to be in the same place from this surface then we'd do that and we'd say right our piston ring has to be 8 from there and the whole groove has to be uh, 4 millimeters, and then we'll just leave that there and then the depth of the groove from the center just say all from the outside if you know you're not going to change that we'll just call it 28 no we'll call it 20 we'll call it 32 there we go like so so you can do that however you might want it the other way where you want it a certain distance from the um the crown in a sense the top so then instead you can do this and put eight there instead it's if you change one of these dimensions it is going to follow that and you can try and jump the gun in a sense any road so in a sense what we're doing is we're cutting outwards like so so we're in a sense we're actually machining in a way um, and then there we go and you go yes like that and there we go we have a piston ring groove and all is gravy and all is good but let's just say we want to step in that um, we go back to there we go to edit sketch not edit feature edit feature is the bit where you've finished and you actually press your feature but you want to edit the sketch so what we want to do here is we want to add a step to this so we can just add the step in like so remove them lines i like to remove all these horrible lines as well and just make it sure it's one continuous line um, but you don't have to do that uh, and we want our step to be an extra uh, five we want five millimeters but we want it to be actually quite shallow so that dimension there is actually two like so for whatever reason you would want to do this all is good and then when you exit the sketch there you go you see we have this stepped shallowed recess there and then we have our main ring groove so you can see how we can use um basically extruded uh, cuts which are from surfaces pretty much or you can use uh, revolved cuts you can also do swept cuts loft cuts boundary cuts but we will get into them because they're a bit more um, a bit more involved so basically just mess around you know if you want to do stuff like this and you want to you know put a flat in something so just to, just say we want to put a flat a set of flats on this so you can get a spanner on it just say so what you need to do is when you need to cut you need to imagine which way the cut is coming from so from here we want a cut profile to go you know a key way to go all the way through so we have to envisage it now from this we want to put a flat in just say here we'll put a flat in here and a flat in here and we want to cut from this surface so what we need to do is we need to find that surface and that's the top plane there if we cut from that plane there we can cut straight down so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to go extruded cut We've already got the top plane selected, so SolidWorks kind of guesses that's why you selected it. And we want to put some flats in. So what I do is I tend to try and mirror everything or you know, use symmetry. So obviously this flat we want uh, symmetrical because we want the spanner to apply torque around the central axis. In a sense, we've created a central axis in this sketch. And what we want to do is... I get this dimension here and let's just say we're going to use a I don't know a 40 millimeter spanner so obviously we'd change that to 20 because that pushes 20 out or you can do uh, 40 divided by 2 like I said before you can do that whichever we want it oops let's undo that we want it from there to that edge and we just want it third to want it nice round numbers and we want the whole width of the thing to be i don't know 28 we'll do that and then obviously it's good to add a dimension here um like so it doesn't really matter that much now when i mirror this the good thing is is when you mirror stuff like that and we'll go into mirroring later because there's also 
uh, linear patterns and the circular patterns and stuff when it's doing the future. But when you mirror stuff like this, if I then change this to 21, both because this is a mirror of this around this, of, you know, and of this mirrored line. So we can change this to wherever we want, like so. Now, when we want to cut this, uh, we go to extrude cut like that. You can always like, exit. This is why you'd want to use something like a mid plane, like so. You don't. You can use these. They can be 50, 100, as long as it cuts through your actual, you know, your actual um, object that you want to cut it through. You can do that. Um, so then, there we go. You see, we've just done that, and we put two flats on this shaft. So then you'd be able to get a 40 millimeter spanner, and just to check, I don't know why, but just in case you want to check, select them two surfaces with your measuring tool, and it's 40 millimeters, so a 40 millimeter spanner would fit on there, nice and lovely, and so on. You don't have to obviously do things symmetrically, you can do one different than the other, and so on. Any road, that's enough for right now. Uh, pretty simple stuff. You, we've used revolve, um, revolved cut and basically extruded cut. So that's it for um, the very simple, and you can do a lot with this. Look what we've done already, and this is not even really scratching the surface. We can do a lot with just um, extruded and um, revolved bosses and extruded and revolved cuts. You know, you can pretty much make most of your things that you'd ever really want to make. You know, there's a few things you want to add, like fillets and all the rest of it, and there's a, there are a few things you want to do, but. Um, for basics, you know, you can mess around for a couple of a couple of weeks and a couple of months getting into this and learning how the interface works, just by just using these four, and obviously the tools that are in the sketchpad. But there's tools in the sketchpad that are really easy to understand. Um, you know, there's a few things like splines and uh, slots and pol polygons, ellipses and stuff. Some of them are a bit meh. Pretty much easy though. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.